She put the gloss on and she's like, I couldn't open my mouth because it <gasps> glued her lips closed. The color of your box right there. <laughs> You're saying mayhem, like Christmas ham. Like mayhem. No. <laughs> Mama, I will tackle an 80 year old woman if I think she's shoplifting. I don't give a f It is so dangerous. For a few dollars cheaper, you don't want what is in these products. Poop. Poop <laughs> and rat shit and lead. Welcome back to Beautiful girl. Bothered, Bruised, Battered, and Bankrupt. Literally, I'm spitting fire. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, today's yeah, not the day, girl. No, today is not for you. Johnny is drinking. And What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, welcome back to a brand new one. Whoop, whoop. We are going to get into it today. We're talking about a lot of things. I'm very excited for this episode. We're going to talk about, first of all, some serious topics. We're going to talk about some counterfeit makeup, how to avoid it, and, and what to look for. how to know if you bought how counterfeit you know? makeup. Oh, smell that makeup, girl. Get in you there. smell that shit? That, that yeah. shit in your lip gloss? <laughs> yes. You taste that oh, shit? Oh, no, girl. The fecal matter from yeah. the rats, honey, in the we'll lab? Help so we're talking about counterfeit makeup. And then a we're live. Gonna, we're going to do a live purchase or pass with some PR unboxing. Since our footage got lost from the PR unboxing, we're, we got some, some new makeup. And then we actually tested out a foundation that both of us have it on right now. I'm shocked. Gooped and gagged. Because I didn't think I would like this foundation. I know you wouldn't. I, I was skeptical. I'm shocked. Yes. And I will say the reason we're calling it a live purchaser pass is because of Johnny's stress level. And we're recording this on a Thursday and yeah. the episode needs to be up in a day and a half. I don't have time to insert all the photos. So we're going to be holding up the PR packages and going person. through it. Yeah. And, so and we and have I'm a so couple excited. great things here that we're going to go, but we're wearing it and I'm happy. So we started it. We've had this on now. What are we going on? Almost an hour. Mm -hmm. So we're real. No setting spray. No primer. I didn't have primer. I on. did not have primer. I didn't even re prep my skin. Yeah. I have nothing on my skin. I prepped my skin earlier this morning. I was like, no, whatever. Let's see how it does. So we're going to tell you what we're wearing and then we're going to go through the live purchase of past. And then at the end of the episode, we're going to assess how everything's looking. Yeah. And because we did a little baby wear test and mama, we are in front of tractor trailer lights. I mean, so this, yeah, I feel yeah, like I'm like, getting abducted by aliens. I'm like, that's what it is. Well, let's dive in. Here we go. Take it away, bitch. So actually, somebody had brought this to my attention recently, and I think it's so interesting because now it's coming back full swing because now I think it's more of a problem than ever. Mm. Years ago, counterfeit makeup, which yes. I'm sure you all have heard and seen, and maybe some of you even own that you might not know you own, which mm. is even scary. I know. Because there was a documentary, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen, that what my friend, Anne, thank you so much, shout out to you, and lover of the podcast, yeah. she said that, did you watch Broken on Broken, Netflix? And I, I said, ask. no. I said, what is that, like Black Mirror? Yeah. Like, I'm thinking it's like a, a yeah. sci-fi show. The story of a gay man. Broken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Broken. Yeah. And it's just, it's Timothy yeah. Chalamet in the end of uh, Call Me By Your Name. Yeah. Just yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Totally. But um, the first episode, and it's all different things, there's like, all different categories, mm -hmm. but the first episode was um, the makeup mayhem. Yes. And so let's rewind years mayhem. ago. That's what you said. Did I really? Mayhem. Did yeah. I really? Yeah. That's disgusting. That's right. Makeup mayhem. Did mayhem. I say mayhem? I'm saying mayhem like it's ham. That's what I mean. Mayhem. It's, isn't it H E M? Yeah. Mayhem. You're saying mayhem like Christmas ham. Like mayhem. No. <laughs> Mayhem. I think I'm right in this scenario. No, but, I think you yeah, are too, but yeah. I can't say mayhem. I'm very, very rarely right when it comes to correcting how people say something. But like, how I'm do you say like, the drag queen's name? Blank Miller. Mayhem Miller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very rarely right in situations like No, I think you're correct. Normal people say log and I say log. My mom and I have the discussion of how I say the color. What's this color right here? Coral. No, no. Okay, go more. Don't be gay about Pink. it. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Oh my Don't God. be gay about it. Yeah, I'm like, apricot? Pink. Okay, red? The color of your box right there. <laughs> oh, orange. I say orange. Orange. Did she say- Orange. Orange? Yeah, I, I say don't know. O-R-A-N-G-E. Orange. Okay. I put a lot of emphasis, and like yeah. my family makes fun of me for yeah, it. Yeah, wow. I think it's just, I'm like, I never heard it, but I'm like, I'm the only one in my family that says orange. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, that's how it's fucking spelled. Not orange. <laughs> orange. <laughs> anyway, counterfeit makeup. So yeah, so there's the first episode of Broken, which goes into depth that my mom was watching, and she was like, oh, I think this is so fascinating. And if I'm not mistaken, they were talking about ColourPop, or this might have been a different- um, Documentary. Documentary series about- how fast they can produce makeup with yeah. ColourPop because they own their lab Girl, to turn manufacture. And burn. Yeah. So it's harder for people to, and also too with their price points, they don't feel the need or I don't think there's a need to counterfeit ColourPop makeup. Yes. But 
let's rewind, and I hate to use this example, but Jeffree Star, mm-hmm. years ago, in the heat of everything, when everybody wanted his shit, yeah. I think he put up like a Snapchat story or something, and someone brought it to his attention that Walmart.com was selling Jeffree. Yes. And he goes, this is not an authorized retailer. Hold on. So then he's like, looking, 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 and he was like, okay, so I didn't know that you can be a third-party seller on Walmart, kind of like how there's third-party sellers on yeah. eBay, Amazon. Amazon. So, And I'm going to get into Amazon real quick, too. Wow. Because Amazon is a little shady, shady boots, boots over wow. here. Because these retailers like to claim that they're strictly prohibiting the sales of uh, counterfeit products, including Walmart was also dubbed for Adidas and one other brand, Nike, I yeah. think, that yeah. they had counterfeits of that. <gasps> And it's amazing, too, because the Jeffrey stuff was the same price yeah. that his stuff was, and then people were getting it, and it looks like Jeffrey, but yeah. every, everything's a little off. Like, if you're a makeup psycho like we are, yeah. I remember, I and I got burned once with counterfeit makeup, and I knew immediately, as soon as I got it in the mail, I opened it up. First of all, the package that it came in, I said, this is not right. Yeah. It was, a, I forget the name of the website. It's no longer a thing, because <laughs> yeah. I've reported it to, yeah. there's actually a, I forget what the name is, but you can actually report them under like a government like Probably website like a better business bureau situation essentially S- yes. similar yeah and so i remember going on this website and i was burned because i went on and there was at the time the heat the kylie lip kits were mm. like sold out everywhere so i was like okay cool they were instead of like maybe 25 let's say they were 14 dollars okay. so i was like wow in the heat of them why are they on sale yeah i'm not thinking any oh uh, okay. differently so i go place my order for like 10 of them yeah. plus an Anastasia glow kit that was like $20 instead of 40. And then I'm sitting there and I was like, something just doesn't feel right. Yeah. So then I go, I email Anastasia <gasps> and yeah. I say, Hey, just wondering if this website is one of your authorized retailers. And they emailed me when I tell you, because I put in, um, there was a section on their Q, like FAQs yeah. that it was like select one of the questions for the representative. Yeah. And it even said authorized retailer like question, Inquiry. because I guess it yeah. was like, a problem they got back to me so fast and said no that is not like i hope you didn't like please like yeah. cancel any orders and only get it from like authorized retailers like listed below wow so then when i got i actually got the shit in the mail yeah. i was shocked and the second yeah, i opened like yeah. that it even came yeah. and so of course like now at the t- oh <laughs> Got it in the mail, knowing what the Kylie lip kits looked like because my yeah. friends had them. I was like, oh, I want like those ten. Yeah, got them in. First of all, the boxes, the colors you could tell were off. So then I yeah. opened them up. The colors of the lip liner didn't match the lipstick. Oh Jesus! So it was like you could tell the colors of everything were wrong, and then it was like the squeaky packaging of like the lip. So I yeah. was like, yeah, that wouldn't pass like quality control. The smell. The smell. That's what was I was gonna say. Hor- it's always the smell rancid it's like super glue like it just has a chemical that's smell. exactly what it was yeah. and so then now so you all know as well i mean what is in these products is disgusting there could be heavy metals like <gasps> i was gonna say aluminum s- copper yeah. not only Girl, heavy metals animal feces i was just gonna say i remember from the broken documentary there was a lot obviously they focused on the manufacturer's overseas that are making this yeah. fake makeup and a lot of them you know even during the documentary as they were trying to find them like they were maybe tipped off like trying to raid them they would like pack up and be emptied out these whole manufacturing oh, facilities Mary, yep and they were really focusing in california on a lot of the like markets like the outdoor markets i the forget fashion what it's district. called yeah in california the LA fashion district is and, where i'll we'll talk about that too i yeah. have the instance wow and where they all, got stung yeah, yeah. yeah and all of the makeup is like set up or whatever Oh, and yeah. in the documentary, they bought some and ended up testing it. And it was, there was like Fecal animal matter. feces. There was a uh, uh, glass, uh, microplastic lead. lead. I remember I came across a video one time of a girl. No, that might've been in the documentary. A girl bought a lip gloss and it might've been like a Kylie situation. And she put the gloss on from a third party retailer and she put it on and she said, she's like, I'm sitting there. And she's like, I was like doing homework. And she's like, I couldn't, I couldn't open my mouth because it glued <gasps> her lips closed because yes. there was literally like there was an adhesive yeah. ingredient in the lip gloss even going to the example of in the fashion district which i think is that's the one that they rated mm-hmm. that kylie was tipped off 
Mm. So she was like, she sent her team. She was like, no, I want you to like not go shut it down. I want you to go and buy it. Yes. She goes, buy everything that you can, buy every piece of it. Like literally go and like infiltrate, buy yeah, and yeah. leave nothing. Yeah. And because then she wanted it. A, she's like, I want it off the street. She's like, I can afford it basically. Yeah. Like I want you to take it off. Yeah. And then we're like calling the police. Once we confirm that it's there and she had people with like hidden cameras, mm. there was Morphe James Charles palettes. Wow. That like, I think even James Charles did once like a side by side and he was like even so they're for doing a video, it now with Tati's because oh Tati Beauty obviously Tati Westbrook closed up Tati Beauty yeah and now her palette the the only eyeshadow palette she produced yeah is being ripped off by third parties they're making it and it's not like you know it's not like alter ego that we always say is a brand a reputable brand that just yeah. makes dupe palettes it's like a third party retailer like that is making and she did a video oh. side by side and she was even saying I think if you go and watch her video she was even saying as she's putting it on like it started to feel different on her eye like irritation and the whole nine yards well and that's what they say too that anybody that it can cause skin issues it can mm-hmm. cause irritations pretty much immediately yeah so anything that you're putting on topically on your face too it goes through it excruciating testing of like what you're doing, what you're putting on your face. Like those products get tested for months and months yeah. and months. And where these people are literally formulating this makeup with like lead and I know. nickel. Yeah, they and don't care what they put copper. In it. And I know it, it's, it's like jarring to know that people are still like, Oh, whatever, but it's cheap. And like, I don't care. I know. Or they think that they're getting a deal on like an Urban Decay Naked palette I know. for $25 instead of $50. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's amazing. But yeah, Kylie sent people to infiltrate, buy everything. And then they did the testing and there was like fecal matter in that too. There was uh, lead in every single lip product. There yeah. was lead. At a point now too, especially Amazon claims that they strictly prohibit the sale of like counterfeit makeup too. But I have always warned my clients for years now, even being at Sephora, yeah. I used to hear all the time, oh, it's on Amazon for cheaper. I know. And I said, be careful who you're buying it from. Cause unless it says it's an authorized, which it's so hard to tell on Amazon, to well, be honest. Like- and the biggest thing I always show people now, when you're looking at a product, it'll be in like right above the product to the left. It'll say what the store name is. Yes. If the store name is any, Anything but house labs or whatever. Yes, exactly. If it's not coming from like Peter Thomas Ross. Yes. Even I would click and check that spelling. Yeah. yeah. Check the spelling. Seriously. Because they take one letter out and they're they're not claiming anything. Maybelline with two A's. (laughs) L'Oreal without the apostrophe. Like it's just going to be the most subtle difference. Yeah. Laurel. Well, this happened too recently. I was watching uh, Bethany Frankel on TikTok has like a whole saga going where she uh, posted, she does like a lot of TJ Maxx videos or whatever. And she posted a video after she had bought Manola Blahniks from TJ Maxx Mm -hmm. and she bought the Manolos and there was someone on TikTok, another creator, a boy who he commented on her video and he goes, mama, those are fake. And she was like, what are you talking about? She goes, how are they fake? And she's gone down this whole rabbit hole where I think she ended up going to Nordstrom and buying the real version, or or I should say buying the shoes from Nordstrom and comparing the two of them and everything this kid, this guy called out from seeing just the fake Manolos from TJ Maxx, little things. He was like, the suede bottom is, that texture's wrong. The the Manolo label is like, it's not perfectly centered and like all these little things. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure she's not the one who uncovered this, but I just, I know this is a recent saga. There's this whole thing with TJ Maxx where people go into TJ Maxx, will buy the real uh, product, the real bag, the real Manolo, the real shoe, the real whatever, take it home, buy the fake knockoff of it and return it. So they're keeping, they're getting the original Manolo shoes from for, TJ for, from TJ for 300 off buying a fake Manolo from for uh, $60 and returning it and getting the full th- 400 they spent on the real TJ Maxx price. And then someone like Bethany goes in thinking she's buying a real Manolo and it's actually fake. And TJ Maxx didn't know it. So she has a whole thing where she's even been talking to TJ Maxx corporate to say, you have to, if you're selling these things, real Manolos and real uh, designer hair, exactly. Designer handbag. You can't just let someone return a Manolo shoe without 
a, a very you need someone strict to authenticate what it process. is. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And Bethany it was funny in her like follow up. She she kept every throughout the saga. She kept tagging the kid who initially did it, and she kept praising him. She's like, "How the fuck could you tell through the one video?" Like, because in, in, in Bethany's initial video, she was just like, "Oh yeah, I bought new. I got Manolo's like this." Because she he was probably doing paused that video and, and he like knew looked. he listed boom 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 all these things are wrong. Yeah, and it's um, but those are the type of people he should be on the TJ Maxx corporate team. Completely. He should yes. be on the one that's like... But also there's like almost an obligation of like, listen, I understand you're TJ Maxx and you're like providing a certain thing in the sense that you're getting things at a discount. Yeah. But there should be some kind of an obligation where if you're selling $600 Manola Blahnik heels for $400, Chad, your cashier can't be trusted yeah. to know what's happening and you're if someone is treating themselves or or whatever you're fucking yeah. them and there needs to be you have an obligation to make sure that your customers aren't getting screwed oh okay so now this is Same like unlocking uh, oh it's unlocking a memory for me now because at sephora you know i was like i could clock fakes from yeah, a girl. mile away and they could be good ones too and there was two instances it was a naked palette and then the Kat Von D the shade and light contour palette yeah we got two returns <gasps> one day so many fakes of that you're so right so many Kat fakes Kat Von D yes. got, used to get ripped off the like contour no palette one's business. Um, like and it, they were good yes I mean these people whoever made these the barcodes even scanned at our register <gasps> as the product it was nuts wow so they replicated the box they only needed to buy one yeah and they just had to basically photocopy it yeah and print it on their boxes so i remember the one day we got a naked palette return it was a naked three and i remember looking at it and i was like signing off and i said a i said they got the packaging of it completely yeah. wrong mm. and i said wow i said and i turned around and i said who took this yeah and i was like so we need to like have a conversation yes. right now because it was unused and i said this could go back on the floor <gasps> and then if somebody has an irritation i it's said it's our ass mary it's us yes um so then i was like absolutely not so then i pulled the store manager into it and he was like oh my god he was like that yeah. doesn't look right and i said yeah and i got a real one and i showed him and i opened it up and i said what is the issue here wow. and then there was somebody trying to return Spot a kvd the difference. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. and yeah. it was highlights magazine yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, a which one of psych- these things does not belong? <laughs> yeah, I was that psycho. Mama, it's a wrap up in here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jail. Yeah, yeah, but you have to know. Yeah, you need to know this. Stuff I was in the counterfeit industry. police. Let I was going working up. in the industry. It's oh, one thing yeah. for the consumer, and that's what we're trying to help you do. But yeah. for working in the industry, you better fucking know. And these people that are returning it, brand new. They bought the they real one. Knew they, they knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. They wanted to get their forty nine dollars back mm-hmm. because they paid fourteen. Yes. And then they were like, "Oh, let's you know do this and Absolutely. switch them out and whatever." You're so like, how many people used to return fragrances, dump out the fragrance, and put rubbing alcohol? The potato and then- in the box. Shut the fuck up. What are you talking about? The potato in the fragrance box. I didn't. I don't know this. Do you story. remember that? Was I there? Um, maybe Might have this been after was right me. before you. It was the notorious story of like somebody taking a fragrance return and they sealed it. Back. In the plastic, and then they like rattled it because if you didn't know, I think they do it now. But Chanel fragrances years ago didn't rattle in the box because yeah. it was the way that they were like it was like a standard that they didn't move. So they were like, "Wow, this is like making too much noise," and they like popped it open. A potato. Shut <laughs> up! Oh my god! And someone took the return without checking the product, so they found this after they thought it was sealed. So then somebody opened it up, and they were like, "No, it looks weird. Like it looks like somebody tried to reseal it yeah. on the bottom." So they like opened it up, and it was a fucking potato all the time and then um somebody tried to return moisturizer a la yeah. moisturizer once and put conditioner in it and i said Swap. i said wait yeah, i yes. literally said i was like in front of like i had no yeah. shame i smelled it and i said that smells like l'oreal and yeah, i walked yeah. away yeah and mama I said, this you're, is garnier i said you're not yeah. returning i said la mer isn't this consistency yes. yeah. and i went and ro- washed my hands because i was like i didn't know what that was but i like touched it i said la mer isn't this yeah yeah and it was like dripping down my finger i said la mer doesn't do that I said, that's a cream. I know. This isn't a liquid product in a jar, but people are ballsy. I know. You pay $325 for a moisturizer. That's on you, boo. Because this is also part of the process. Exactly. Let's say, you know, and they say it's unopened and they put it back on the floor. Then you're buying that counterfeit potato. You're buying that potato. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. You're buying that blue day potato. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. The lengths that people will go to. There's a lot of dirtbags in this world. I know. To like get one over on people. I could go on for days. The amount of times that people 
people tried to get one over on us and I, I would just be like, entertain, entertain, entertain. And I was like, no. I think I told you the story about when I was there at Sephora, I was helping a woman. It, we were packed. It was holiday. It was, you could not move in the store. And I was helping this woman like really one-on-one, like putting something on and teaching her how to do it, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, I haven't got them as much since, but I always used to get migraines, like debilitating, like where mm. I'd start to lose my vision. Then I'd get nauseous. I'd be throwing up and I had to like sit in the dark for 12 hours and I've, it started to come on and I started to like, I could barely function and I saw this fucking, and let me tell you, let me tell you, you know how they say like the typical retail situation is like nowadays, I feel like you're not allowed to accuse anyone of shoplifting. You're not allowed mm. to this. You're not, mama, I will tackle an 80 year old woman if I think she's shoplifting. I don't give a fuck. You know why? Because nothing disgusts me more. Like I, whatever your motivation is, get a fucking life that you are shoplifting well and for whatever of all, the reason may cosmetics. be cosmetics it a non-necessity. Exactly. If you're shoplifting a loaf of bread, I have a, I have a different level of empathy for you. But if you're shoplifting a, yeah. cos- a Clarisonic, it was the Clarisonic holiday <gasps> set. For I like, remember, you remember this, this. For like $400, oh. it was the Mac Daddy holiday set. Yes. And I'm helping this woman. It was right by the door. It was one of the mirrors right by the entrance. And I see her walk in. I see her pick up the box. And I see her slyly slide it into a giant Nordstrom bag. Girl, you want to fire me up? I literally turned to her and I go, do you want a basket to put that in? And she just kept looking at me and she was like, nah, like not answering me. And you better believe I said to the woman I was helping, I in a millisecond pretty much gave that woman a task that I knew would keep her busy for a minute and a half. Like you I was said, like, apply this concealer. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. nothing. I gave about her it. homework where I was like, you know, just do this, blah, 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 blah. And I knew she'd be, and I'm like, I'll be right back. And I go, you best fucking believe I followed this woman around the entire store. And I kept saying to her, I'm like every chance. And she kept like not responding to me and just mumbling and I kept saying I'm like no I'm like you can't keep the Clarisonic that I saw you put in the Nordstrom bag you can't keep it in the Nordstrom bag you need to put it in the Sephora basket you understand ignoring me ignoring me ignoring me and I kept literally one foot behind her just kept following her around the store because I was going to physically stop her from leaving because it infuriates me I hate greedy gross people like this is why Sephora enabled trainings that we can't do this yeah yeah yeah, because I tackled somebody tackled an 80 year old woman stealing a Clarisonic yeah and I ended up like because I put so much pressure on this woman, yeah. she just left it on the ground and ran out of the store and I ended wow. up getting it. But because of the adrenaline of doing that, because obviously my heart was pounding because like I, it just was a, a very intense situation. Yeah. My migraine. I mean, Picked. when I tell you through the roof, like I could feel my heartbeat in my skull and I went back to this woman and I. I had to say to her, I'm like, listen, girl. And she was so nice. This this woman I was helping. I was like, listen, girl, I'm like. I just had to stop a woman from shoplifting. And she looks at me and she's like, what? She's like, when did that happen? I was Wait, like, and she has concealer yeah, all yeah. over. It, this poor woman was like, this is Barbara's origin story. Yes. Yeah. That she the goes, day Barbara you left a, me. The day Barbara yeah. became a villain. Yeah. 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 Her Joker origin story. Yeah. And then it gets dark around her and she goes, I left really? it with all the blush on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's the Barbara origin story. And she was so sweet and apologetic. And I like ended up wrapping up with this woman and I went right in the back and I told the managers and this was our old store director who mm. was there when I started was to date and will always be the greatest boss that we've ever I had in our life. Loved her. She and, was the best. Um, we, Luann was shout her out. Yeah. And Luann was, oh my God. And they told Luann over the thing and Luann came and was like, oh my God, like, thank you. That's amazing. Good for you. And I told her and she was like, just go home. Like, and she let me leave. And she was like, you know, good for you for like stopping the thing. But I literally was like infuriated, like, and stop the shoplifter. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That was crazy. I do remember (laughs) that that was insane. And now to the point of like even stopping people, like we don't have to harp on this, but yeah, we're not allowed to like do any of that. No accusatory statements. I can't offer you a bat. Like there was none of that. And I was like, this is just, so they are blatantly stealing and we're leaving it to, but Sephora is great about it because because they like stop people. Did you ever see the video online? There's a TikTok of some woman, some Karen in a Sephora going- Oh, getting tackled by the security? Going insane. And this woman is filming it. And the woman filming it deserves an Emmy is narrating the situation so hysterically. Because it was mall security that tackled, tackled her. her. And then the Sephora, yes. what do they call the person? Loss prevention. Loss prevention. The like security guard that makes sure you're not stealing or whatever is 80 years old. This old white guy is 80 years old. I thought he was the mall cop. The 80 year old one that was like running after him. So maybe the loss prevention was the person that had her on the floor because she started going insane. And about a minute in, this 80 year old man comes, and I'm not kidding you, like this, just like, 
coming into yes, the situation. Yes, I remember that. And the woman in the thing trying to pepper spray him is cackling, going, "What the hell is this guy gonna do?" Because he could barely stand. I and think it, yes. And then she was trying to pepper spray both of them, and yes. I was like, "Girl, in a Mary, yeah." And she was stealing that Sol de Janeiro, probably. Girl, let it go. Let it go. Give it up, delicious. Totally. It ain't worth it. Kevin bit, just asked I don't... me, I gotta tell you guys this. Kevin just goes, so we just got back from break, and he goes, should we tell them that we're going back to counterfeit makeup after Sephora stories? And I'm like, we're both fried. I'm I'm not, and you were like, what were we talking about just now? I'm pouring alcohol on camera. Yeah. It, it, listen, you I guys. I hope you're enjoying this. At this point, yeah, we've yeah. got a loyal following. We love you yeah. all. You know you're following our train of thought. Listen, like, I'm all over the, this is how I go. When I'm talking to my friends, I go, oh, I'm well, here, there, everywhere, and we're circling back. I'm like, oh yeah, so we were talking about yes. getting hit by a car, but I first started talking to you about your lip gloss yes to- and people i love the people that yeah. in the comments that are like i feel like i'm listening to you to talk without the camera on this, this is, is exactly what we're like off camera <laughs> yeah. we, i'm not kidding this is us hanging we're here out there everywhere and i'm like boop, boop, boop. this is exactly and then we're all what all over we the talk place about in the conversation yes. so um i want to do like go back and touch on the, mm-hmm. the counterfeit makeup of when you're looking at something if yeah. you're unsure let me tell you something if you are unsure if it's counterfeit, girl, it's probably counterfeit. Yeah. Not just price point wise and not just saying this, but if it's not from Sephora, mm-hmm. Ulta, department store, things like that, Amazon is sketchy to me. Yeah. I will yeah, say that right now. With you. Even ones that like are authorized retailers for Peter Thomas Roth. And if it's a, if it's a few dollars cheaper, it's probably expired. I know. You just don't know. So like I had somebody that ordered and an even SPF. the seal might be broken. So then oh. the clock's ticking on it. Like you just don't know. Oh, exactly. And then who knows how long these have been sitting in a warehouse from when it was made to then now it somehow ended up in an Amazon warehouse. I don't buy yeah. it. I don't like it. I don't. I know. I'm not into it. So for me personally, I would say always go by authorized And I love retailers. what you said about going to Anastasia and maybe even go, let's say you are in the fence where like, uh, whatever, there's a prime day or whatever the case is and you're on the fence, go to the website of Peter Thomas yes. Roth and see if they have that drop down fax to say, what's the authorized retailer? Some and of them they're have very Amazon. Responsive. Yeah. And they're very responsive where you can say to them, listen, send them the link in the email and say, is this an authentic or, you know, whatever the thing. And they'll yeah. get back to you really because it's yeah. not worth it. No. And honestly there are a lot of times where i've checked like authorized retailers and amazon is there they do have amazon storefronts for these brands which i am fully like okay if they work if they advertise it love that yeah good for you but i will say if you're on the fence if it is a smaller brand if it's even a big brand like maybelline and it's a really big brand i just go to the drugstore go to ulta they are everywhere don't i know for a few dollars cheaper you don't want what is in these products Potentially. Totally. The fact that there is, it is so dangerous. Poop. <laughs> Poop. And, <laughs> and life altering. There are people that have used stuff that it, they have changed their, their skin forever. Oh, they Jesus have ruined Christ. themselves. I know, I know. For a life, there is no coming back I from know. it. And if you get a bacterial infection, like let's say you're, yeah, you're yeah. prone it's to sickness. Immune compromise. Yeah, yes. if you're immunocompromised and you go to use something that has fecal matter Poop in on it. on your lips. Yeah. 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 And then you're ingesting this. If it's mm-hmm. in a lip gloss and you're ingesting lead and totally. fecal matter from an animal, please just take, take the time. Take to, the time to yeah. just do your research, do your due diligence. Don't just go on Amazon and say, oh, it's $10 cheaper. I'm yeah. going to buy it from and here. Especially with a lot of the indie brands like you're oh. saying about Jeffree Star like even take into you know uh, nowadays I feel like the the indie brands at the top of their game are your yeah. Trixie Cosmetics Kim Chi Chic Moira you know it's as easy as emailing the 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 contact information on the website yeah. and exactly if it's if it's majorly discounted or even five dollars off that's a red flag girl because and I will say the statistics showed when they did the research on these brands 70 percent of the brands makeup brands that are popular Seventy percent of them have counterfeits out there. Jesus. So if you take every beauty brand that's very popular, or if it's in Sephora or Ulta, or even hot online, and if it's sold out, seventy percent of those brands have counterfeits. I know. So it's just about where you're buying your makeup, and they say if it's a third of the price, they were like, yes. "Don't even yeah. consider yeah. it. There yeah. is something wrong with it." Especially if it's a Urban Decay is like one of the big ones that I always feel like I see. 
if the eyeshadow primer is like four dollars, yes. girl, Mary, it ain't it. It ain't it. It's yes. not real. Yes, I don't know what it is, but it's not that. And then even going further than counterfeit makeup, I should say, just like sanitary or whatever, or like doing uh, double checking that you're getting something that is maybe you know up to quality or not reused, not a return that's on the shelf, a potato in a box. <gasps> like you know, I'm somebody always. I especially when it comes to lip products. If there is that not that sticker seal, girl, don't do it. Well, I'm even shaded out by buying products in TJ Maxx because too many people open them and swatch them. Tell me that. And there's a way to tell because TJ Maxx does have legitimate products too, but now even be careful because to Bethany Frankel's point of buying the shoes and then who knows who's buying counterfeit makeup and then returning it to TJ Maxx. Oh God, I didn't even think of that. So think about that. We're like, and if if you're ever curious, Sephora Ulta's... I feel like you don't have to do this where TJ Maxx, I always do, is that I open it up a little bit. And if you open up a lip product, not all the way, don't pull out it out. If it's clean around like the stopper, it's called right on the inside. If you pull that out very gently, if there's no product there, it's not used. You could put it right back, seal it up. But if you see lipstick or any product around the rim, somebody opened it and put it back. Even if they just looked at the color, they could have swatched it. They could have put it on. Exactly. Mary, that's gross. Which how many people put lipstick testers on in the store? Oh, do you remember the per, my first episode here that I told the yes that was your rouge per couture number fifty two and she put it between her lips between and her those. tongue was touching the tip and she's like whoa, whoa, whoa. she fucking ate that and I was like, for dinner I was like yeah. first of all I didn't sanitize that second of all now I'm throwing that away because there's no coming back from that that was disgusting disgusting Lola yes. Disgusting. I also would take it a step further. Yeah. And let me preface by saying this. Be respectful. Don't be a hop. Don't be a bull in a china shop. But you better believe me when I buy anything, even in Sephora, Ulta, whatever. If I'm buying a foundation, let me put it this way. Let's say I'm buying a foundation. And even if the seal looks like it's whatever, I but it, it could be a little. If I only do this if I know I'm going to buy it if it's okay. I will take the cap off and make sure there's no little baby. Always look at the the nozzle, the pump of the foundation. If oh. there's when you buy a brand new foundation, the no. squirt, the pump, there sh- you should not see a drop of foundation. If you see foundation in that little thing, that means someone's pumped it. Yeah. That whenever I buy like expensive eyeshadow palettes from Sephora, mm. I will, and again, be respectful. I very gingerly, I open the box, I take the palette out. And I open to make sure it's not broken, to make sure it's not destroyed. Oh, yeah. And to make sure there's no finger swatch. And that's the thing. I only do that if I know if it's okay, it's not going, I'm going to buy it. Because there have been, I remember, I think it was when I bought the Patrick Tob Major Dimensions 2. I opened up the thing, I checked very gingerly whole palette was broken so then i the second wow. one i did was was fine so then i brought both to the to the register and i gave it to the people and i said just so you know this one's shattered like so i'll bring the one if it ends up being swatched right or and gross, you're not being the asshole that's you don't put it back it. on the yeah. shelf if you discover it's gross yeah. bring it to the front and get it off the floor for the next person and yeah. that's always what i do yeah i was always doing that too and i would always stop people i was so like people would say i was like mean about it but i was just like no like you're not supposed to there was people the tester would be right there and they would like open up glosses and swatch I them know. and go to put them back and before they even put it back i would be like yeah i yeah, was like yeah. so first no, of all on my watch i was like yeah. what are we doing yeah yeah that somebody is now gonna buy them and they were like and then they would pick up a fresh one and go buy that and i, I said you just put that on your dirty paw yeah you go buy that totally. one totally don't totally. be that bitch yes that pissed me off more than any or swatching the shadow palette and then putting it back and then picking a fresh one too like same thing it's like okay but you're the one that just watched it you yes. fucking take that one yes and no, let you me want tell the you, pretty one like and nine no. times out of ten too if you if something at Sephora, especially that, I can attest to more working there, not as much Ulta. But um, if you want to try something that doesn't have a tester, if you ask the person and say, there's no tester for this, can you make a tester? Nine times out of 10, unless there's like super limited stock, they'll make a fucking tester for you. Yeah. I used to, I wouldn't even ask. I would just make, I'd be like, yep, I'd open one, make a tester and throw the box away. Like, cause it used to aggravate me. I'm like, how the fuck are people supposed to know yeah. if you don't have a tester? Like they'll make a yeah. tester. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Totally. So, so just make sure you ask somebody, don't just open up products. 
product yeah. on your own. But if you're checking it, like I always check. I always all, check. I did it today. I bought a blush duo and I was like, let me just make sure it's not broken. Yes. Because I, I was like, I literally open eyeshadow palettes to the point that I make sure I don't get fingerprints on them as oh, though I'm, I'm not like, going to buy it if then it's good. It is but mission I, I impossible. Yeah. Done. Dun, dun, dun. It is yes. Da Vinci code. I don't know why I do it is, that gingerly. I am Nicholas fucking Cage. Because I feel guilty in a way, but I'm like, if it's fine, I'm going to buy it, which is the only I am, reason I do that. But I'm if it's fully, broken, I'm going to give it to the people anyway. So why am I like afraid of getting fingerprints oh, on it? Oh, I'm sweating. I'm like fully like uh, like blue wire, red wire. Which one am I cutting? Oh, and it's that level yes, of like, yes. I'm like drop of sweat. Yes. And I'm like, don't get on the box. And yes. I'm like, <laughs> I need it. Yeah. I don't need yeah. it. Yeah. I need yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah, guys, be careful because yes. it's a weird, disgusting industry. The whole counterfeit makeup yeah. industry. So go watch Broken. Go, go watch, watch that Broken first on episode. Netflix. Yeah. It's the first episode. They're not paying us to tell you this. And yeah, no, and there's, a, a bunch of other um, segments too on like fashion and yes. everything. I'm sure they touch on it. And oh, it, it's a scary it, it, counterfeit shit is just scary. So I know. please go watch it. It's very eye opening. Yes. We left you with a little bit of a cliffhanger last week, which everyone wanted to know what I was teasing. So I think we can, uh, I'll put it this way because it's still process, but Casey and I are in the middle of buying a house. Which a lot of you guessed. It's super yeah. exciting. Johnny is leaving me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, like a minute and a half from where we live now. Like, yeah, so, so yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, we're still going to be in New Jersey, like in the same town, everything. Uh, but this house, like we, for years, like we've been together six years. And for years and years walking around the town, we always used to look at this house. And we'd be like, because it came on the market in 2020 and obviously we weren't like ready or looking to buy a house and we were so sad because we were like oh my god like someone's obviously gonna buy it and they're like gonna live there for yeah. more than three years but we always used to like joke around and say like we're gonna live in that house like you talk about wow. maybe unconscious manifesting or whatever so it was funny when i told you what it was you even said like at one point when we were hanging out you were like you've told me about that house like you yeah. pointed it out to multiple me multiple times too, yeah which is like i feel like anyone insane. i've ever brought to our town and like showed them around the town i always made a point to say that's our dream house because of yeah. where it is so long story short this thing came on the market out of nowhere and when i tell you we went to the open house for it what's today tuesday wednesday thursday Thursday. Thursday. We're filming Thursday. So this was not this Sunday, but the Sunday before we went to the open house and we were just like going to go see and torture ourselves. And, yeah. You know, and we kind of Casey said while we were looking at it, he's like, God, he's like, we're running out of I'm running out of reasons to talk myself out of it because it was just better in person. It was bigger in person. Like, because you know how those realty photos make something look like the Taj Mahal. Like, well, they're with, taking panoramic. Yeah. They're, they're taking panoramic pictures of a closet and mm -hmm. making it look like. It is the biggest bedroom of them yes. all. And you get there and you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. And this was the opposite. Like the pictures yeah. were still nice, but everything was twice as big in person. So we were wow. like, oh my God. So we're looking around. That rarely happens when it's bigger in I person know. from photos. <laughs> from the photos. And we, <laughs> I called my sister and I was like, um, how do you buy a house? Like, so, yeah. uh, yeah. we ended up, the process went and I'm not kidding you. So it's been a week and a half and wow. in that time, we've gone from open house, pre-qualification for loan, put in the offer, attorney review, attorney review concluded, got the inspection done all in a week and a half. So when I tell you this past week and a half, I've been like strung out. And let me just tell you about the whole process of buying a house. What a fucking sham and a scam. The whole thing. I believe it. Well, the yeah, whole thing. I believe it. It's so insane. Like as a first time home buyer, it's just, and my sister gave me the best advice and she basically said, like going through it all, she's like, you know, don't be afraid to just advocate for yourself, be aggressive and ask a million questions because you would think while you're making the biggest purchase of your life, everybody else involved would have that same level of care, interest, et cetera. And my sister said, she's like, you got to remember you're making the biggest purchase and decision of your life. And for everybody else involved, this is just another Tuesday. And that is so true where the attention to caring about giving you advice and walking you through the next process. And thankfully one person in this process for us is like a family's member's father like so uh, that's been amazing to be able to like yeah. ask a million questions like what the hell's going on but then yeah as you get down the road like following the inspection there's just this weird weird situation that i <laughs> called kevin today and like was in my driveway like yeah yeah i, I never yelling it at you to i don't then yeah, yeah i don't think i've ever i have i've seen very few a time where you have gotten this heated and 
it, it was rightfully so yeah. too. I mean, it's. Like you're saying, too, this is somebody's job. This is just another Tuesday, um, Thursday. <laughs> yeah. um, this is just another day where this is somebody's job to sell you this house. Yes. So they're going to they're gonna sleep tonight no matter what. Exactly. Where you're losing sleep over making this decision and yes. all of the things that are going into it. And you're finding all the things that you're like, no, this isn't correct. This isn't yeah. how it should be. This isn't. Yeah. It's amazing to see that they're just like. Okay, we oh, don't have to disclose this. We don't oh, have yeah, to say yeah. this. Oh, oopsie. We didn't tell you about this huge financial obligation yeah. or whatever. Like, I should not be the one uncovering massive financial obligations. You should in not. The and that process. is the job of the realtor. And yeah. I'm sure there's going to be someone in the comments too that knows a realtor or maybe is one that yeah. will say that it is their job to do this yeah. and disclose this information. And just say, hey, heads up. I know. You might incur an expense that maybe... Yeah. Can make it or break it for you buying this house. Yes. Yes. And honestly, it's I like, it, it, it's weird. Cause it's like, whatever, like I get shit needs to be done. And like, I don't even care that I have to let me put it this way. I'm happy. I figured out what I figured out and like the way the cookie crumbles, I'm happy right. to do it. But a, the first thought in my mind was like, I feel so bad for people that don't have like, think about people. And I have friends in my life that they don't talk to their parents or they don't have their resource, whatever. And I think about all the people out there that don't have help. And you wonder why, you know, the narrative of like systemic problems of like people who are start in shitty situations, trying to get out of those situations, it's 90 times harder because every system is built for people that, you know, less financial stress, the bigger check you can write out, the bigger whatever, it then it, it's, oh, oh, you didn't do your job. Oh, whatever. Okay. We can, we can compensate and pay. But if you can't, if you, if you really need to know every single step of the process, because you don't have that flexibility, I just think about all the people that get left behind or things are so much harder for them because they don't have a parent to call. Like, and in my case, my dad's a contractor. He can build a house from scratch, plumbing, electric, heating, whatever. So he was at the inspection and he pointed out half of the things we found to the inspector. Not everybody has that. And it's just yeah. like, it breaks my heart for those people. And B, yeah, girl, I rarely get heated. And I'm very, over the past couple of years, I've turned into a very in the moment person. Like I don't whatever, but when, because you know why? Nothing gets me riled up more than when I feel like I'm getting taken advantage of. Oh, someone's trying to pull one over on you. Oh, that, 100%. Exactly. Even if it's not oh. out of malicious, what? 100%. Oh, I know. So, oh my God, we're laughing because people in the comments like point out the phrases we always say. <laughs> I know, 100%. Mine is get out of here. Everyone always says, I said, get out of here. I know time. I say the same shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know I do. And that's it. An, and it's like, even if exactly the people, it's not malicious intent. I just get so fired up when mm. the, the magnitude of the situation, I should say, is not being respected by the other people involved. Oh, you're spending this much money. Oops, we fucked up. Oops, we fucked up again. Oops, we didn't tell you this. Oh, because they're thinking. Oh, you're already spending this much money? You can afford that. Totally. Totally, totally. No, girl. Exactly. Exactly. And, well, and then people use the excuse, too, of, and I'm going to say people, let me let me be more specific. Yeah. Sellers. Yes. And realtors will assume you have flexibility and wiggle room for your budget. So they're going to say, oh, you can afford uh, a 50000 oh, or yeah, 100000 yeah, yeah. whatever the amount may be, whatever it might be. They're going to say, you have that flexibility room. Yes. No. Yes. That is not everybody's situation where they have another $100,000 laying around just yes. to be like, oh, flexibility in case something goes wrong with the house. Totally. Or in case we need to invest more money or like whatever. Yeah. No. Yeah. You don't know what my situation is. You, you don't know no what idea. someone has to deal with. That person, someone buying a house may also be needing to deal with a sick family member or doing like, don't. And that's what I mean. There's just such little empathy in this. world. And I was saying, I was talking about it with my dad. And I just said, I was like, there is just certain industries that it is just, be, they become so lather, rinse, repeat, where it's just completely a uh, financial uh, transaction. And, yeah. and yes, it quite literally, by definition, this is a financial transaction. Yeah. But let me know every detail. Do Correct. your job. 
I yeah. do your part of the job. That's yeah. what aggravates me. Well, and now too, that you've done that part and you've had to now pick up the pieces for somebody else. It's going to be very, very telling when I they know. come back, you've already done the work and you said, this is what you need to do. Yeah. It, it, it's like elementary school. Like you have to like watch spoon everybody. Feed. And, yeah. Spoon and you're, feed. Yeah. You're quite literally like now, like, okay, I know now that this is done, go do this. Yes. yes. Like and I, you shouldn't have to do that as a home buyer. I know. And that's the thing. I laugh because Casey is so much more, uh, just soft than me in these situations. Bro. He'll kind. Send, kind. Yeah. <laughs> where he'll send an email and be like, you know, um, you know, this is what we're thinking. And like this person, you know, feel this way. And it's a little bit more of like a free flowing thought about how we feel, yada, yada. And I'm the kind of person, especially in an email, I'm like, no, bitch, this is what has happened. I am either pleased with it or not. This is what needs to be done. Bullet, bullet, bullet. We're not friends. I am paying you to do a job for me. It doesn't mean I'm going to be rude, but I am listing out because if you don't spoon feed people, I need this this and this answered. And I want an email back with nothing, but don't even say hello. Just answer those three questions. Answer, answer, answer. Because then it's chasing around and around and around. Mary, that's how it should be, especially when you're buying a house and something so serious. You're spending an enormous amount of money. I need everything to the T. Girl. Just done answered I and know. no questions about it. I know. And I know. there should be no uncovering of information as if it was American Horror Story that 18 people have died in this home. <laughs> yeah. That should yes. be fucking disclosed. Yes, no, really. Nobody died in the house. Well, uh, let's just say metaphorically, I opened up the closet and there was a dead body in it. Yeah. So that's well, what, yeah, yeah, that's what we're dealing with. Quite but, the financial burden yeah. in the closet. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that I need to get the house Tented, the smell extracted yeah. the whole night. So it's like, yeah, so that's the th- what we're going through. So get ready, guys, because we're going to go on a ride. And that's what I was kind of hinting at last yes. week. So the positive sides of it, well, I will wrap up and say, you know, that part of it, it's, it's, it's sad because it's like, I feel like I've been through, I had two days of nervous breakdowns, like right when we mm-hmm. put the offer in and whatever, because I was like, oh my God, what are we doing? I just yeah. don't feel like an adult. I'm panicking. There was that. And then once you kind of get over that hump and you really realize and crunch the numbers, I have 90 Excel sheets, you realize, okay, we can do this. This is going to happen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Then you get over the tipping point where now you are just so emotionally attached to the prospect of it happening. So now that's where I am and where Casey is, where it's oh, heartbreaking if what's it's going like, on ends up making the, it fall through. It's like going to the adoption center for a dog and you're like, I love this dog, exactly. I love this dog. Then you're finding out it might have like health issues mm-hmm. and you're like, but I still love this dog. I want to go home. It's already part of my family. Exactly. That's like, it's just as heartbreaking where it feels like you're you're going to see something that you, you know, it is like adopting a dog. It's yeah. like you're buying something that you love and you had your heart set in. Like that's how I always felt about getting dogs. Because I was yeah. like, I don't want to leave today if I'm not taking it home. I know, like, I know. I was always that way. So buying a house too that you've been eyeing for years. Let alone, exactly. We have five years house. of emotional attachment on top of this being so close we can taste and it. And I literally just looking at the photos. I know, oh girl. But that being said, the positive aspect of this is mm. if this ends up happening, um, my God, the house content y'all are going to get. <gasps> and the oh, podcast of you gosh. and I on the deck and in the house. And oh, everywhere. everywhere. On the roof. On the roof. On the roof in the bathroom uh, don't get me started yeah yeah you better not yeah um <laughs> let me just say i'm already drinking a high noon and i got a spare ready to go under my chair yep, so, absolutely. um because it's funny in my apartment it's like it's obviously nice but it's like there's no angle of this apartment that's shall i say glamorous or, or even not like gonna have just like walmart tubs holding makeup behind it like it's a little crunchy dunchy so it's like I, i'm just oh, so excited and like going in this into house. a new space and, yes yeah and that's a thing y'all some of y'all may know this about me but like because of my dad he uh, taught me so much stuff and whatever like I'm so excited to make house content even about like the first thing I want to do is like I want to rip up the tile in the kitchen redo the hardwood floors like this is all stuff I know how to do we do the backsplash and then obviously a lot of it is really just paint and then decorating or whatever but I'm so excited for the house yeah. content and the space we would have. Oh my God. And then I just want to like the move <laughs> and the moving process. I'm going to help. I already offered. I cannot wait to be like hard hat on just moving Girl, furniture. Not a even pink hard, hard hat. I'm going to order hard you hat one. just to move furniture. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I said, I want to make like shorts of Kevin, like just tell you to do manual labor on your own. Like, Oh, could you go put the couch together? But and you know film what? You secretly? Do you know what's crazy? I love putting things together mm. and I'm really good at it, which love is it. like odd for me yeah. because I didn't know I was like yeah. capable. You don't put put a lot together, so... No. 
It's not all put together. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Totally like happens. choose your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always been good at that, girl. You've always been good with your hands. Yeah, yeah. the football team. Oh, it, my God. So that's the house saga. Fingers, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that, you know, this is something that you both deserve, too. It's such a, uh, it's your dream home. So yeah. fingers crossed. All righty. After this, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be back with our live purchaser pass. Work. Alrighty, live purchase or pass. So should we this start with fun. the foundation we're wearing? I think we have to. Try it because then at the end we'll show them. Yeah. So you let's grab do it? it. Yeah. It's like Christmas. So I did not know this was a thing, nor did I expect this to happen. This is the new REM Beauty Foundation. Yeah. Okay. First of all, we need to talk about the PR package. <gasps> okay. I'm going to put my mic down so I can yep. literally. So, so it's here. this, I will say REM Beauty PR packages are always next level. So there's this little sliding door, like a little thing. Can you even like, look at that. And then we have. I'm like, the, oh, tell her, Mary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah. what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> so we have the foundation, which I love, love, love the bottle of this. It is that thin. So we have a little bit of a custom packaging. And you have to wonder how much something like this costs the brand to me. I just ran across frame as you're saying that. Keep going. Oh, yeah. and I'm just thinking like how much they I must know. spend on these custom units for these products. Totally. And so she then, afford it. <laughs> and then, uh, cause I saw this in stores and I was wondering, I was like, oh, I wonder if they sent you the tools to use. And so then Girl. I was like, oh, this looks like it comes up up and it <gasps> fully unveils we have two sponges two the concealer sponges, brush the new concealer brush and then the new foundation brush which i'm like obsessed with right now don't quote me at the time of when this is coming out yeah. but check the ulta app because when the the foundation launched the other day so whenever this comes out this would be now four days ago that it yeah. launched when you buy the foundation you get the new beauty sponge for free okay so check your local ulta see if they still have stock left over because rem mm-hmm. beauty wasn't like selling out like that so go see because then you could check it out and get the free um, yeah new sponge for the foundation oh i didn't even see that okay so we have which okay i have to say i love this little baby um like it has a cutout for it. So see that. And why I love that is for carving out the contour. And then you have this flat side to the sponge for concealer, etc. So this is, I will actually say I've never. I like that it's more custom. A, a typical beauty blender here. Yeah. This really, because uh, Fenty Beauty tried to make her own sponge. And like. I didn't like it. It was other, too soft. I know any other person that like alters the traditional egg beauty blender, the shape. I'm and always the like. Texture. You're doing too much. Exactly. Let alone then it's hard as a rock. It's hard as a rock. Soft, or it's too soft and I'm porous. ripping it. Yeah. Not porous enough, which obviously I will oh, say. Oh, do this you feels remember like the kitchen blender. sponge of Rare Beauty? Yes. How yes. that thing had craters like the moon. And I know. it was. I was falling in. I was like, what is this kitchen sponge? I know. That so I will is... say I really enjoy that yeah. just like texture of it. And then it seems so now this is what I mean. So this nobody needs this. Nobody needs this little flying saucer here. So there's a smaller yeah. sponge. What are we doing with this? I don't know. Yeah, it what am like, I putting on my nipple? This is a nipple like, sponge. You know what? It looks delicious. I want to take a bite out of it. It, it looks, looks like, like a macaroon. A macaroon. Yeah, this is ridiculous. But the bigger sponge, that is beautiful. Yeah, I love the that's design. That's definitely worth it. Right out of the gate, these fucking brushes. But I mean, I'm just obsessed. These like, brushes are amazing. I want the brush so bad. I'm we, like, so the foundation. So this God. is the foundation we're wearing. Obviously, buried the Love lead, it. but and the concealer, the uh, brush is so nice because we've described the Ulta number twelve. Yeah, that brush, and it's basically that, but it is square. You know what this reminds me of? Hmm. The if the Ulta and Sephora we love met. You know how everyone uses the Anissa brushes online, the yes. big purple handle. Yeah. That is what this looks like. But the bristles are a perfect combination of it's a perfect density, soft enough, but dense enough. Uh oh, here we go again. And that <laughs> weak grass, weak grass. Yeah, they're moving well enough. And this, I oh, mean, God. even looking at this, did barely sucked up any of the foundation. This I and we both used it back to back with our foundation. Did. So we're that there was close. no there was yeah. no cleaning it in between. I felt like my foundation yes. color wasn't on yours and vice versa. Absolutely, absolutely. So really love that. So this is it's called the sweetener foundation and let me tell you i opened up this little information card about it and i said to kevin i was like this better not be glowy we have enough with the, enough with the glowy foundations let me tell you the way i was turned on when i read natural matte finish mm-hmm. and weightless feel and like looking at you you look soft you know, matte shiny? finish no well we also did put the setting powder 
Okay, so we have another so we product did on that, as well that I'm we like used. Obsessed. So the the what I like about this, it says on the thing, she dreamed a foundation that's actually skincare. So this is clinically proven to hydrate instantly for up to four weeks, fueled by REM Hydra Smooth Essence, which this is a lot of fairy tales, but who knows? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Essence with I know what ingredient is coming. Raspberry leaf extract yeah if you watched last week fueled by rem hydra smooth essence with raspberry leaf extract and hyaluronic acid spheres niacinamide get away from me yeah known to brighten correct dull uh correct dullness and reduce the look of pores i will say this though this is the thing this was my problem last week we were talking about the uh elf power grip primer Mm. and we were talking about the one with niacinamide we were basically saying the power grip primer is not for oily skin and my problem with niacinamide in products that are not for oily skin is redundant because niacinamide, I mean, niacinamide has benefits for everybody, yes, but I think niacinamide is so much more beneficial for uh, oily skin because you have enlarged pores, you have the congestion, you have yeah. the, it's almost like a salicylic, a safe salicylic in a makeup form. Yeah, because it, I feel like niacinamide, correct me if I'm wrong, helps with dark spots as well. Yes, for brightening. And, for brightening yes. and then oil controlling as well. Yes. Niacinamide does things so for oil where controlling. I'm not mad at this having niacinamide because it's a natural matte finish mm. so this is better for people who are combination and oily i uh, love it yeah so I'm obsessed so available in 60 shades and um, i will tell you i saw 60 shades in store and i was swatching yeah. a bunch of them i'm like impressed it uh makes the skin look healthier and radiant long wearing and waterproof not water resistant waterproof vegan cruelty free and consciously made wow. which who's that depends on the conscience but anyway yeah. I will say, so this is what we have on, and we're going to hold mirrors up to ourselves at the end and let you know, but I will say um, the color situation is a little... Color matching is a little backwards, honey. Mr. Magorium's Wonder Emporium. Oh, hello. It's a little... Twirly yeah. mustache. Like, I'm dying. I got a Willy Wonka yeah, the shit. Yeah, yeah. Because we were, we were given up here. Which I will say this. I ended up using Light 3C, which is light. That's, That's number what, three. Isn't that what I used? Yes, I think so. Yeah. And things with a lower number are darker than things with a higher number and warms are cool and cools are warms. So like it's a little, and then, but we use 3C and this, so light 3C, this is beautifully cool tone. Yeah. This is stunning. The neutral was neutral. I do want to know what the difference is though between C and P in yes. them. Maybe peach. Peach. Mary Peach. Dugan. You're, totally. You're a genius. Yeah, yeah it's totally is because it, it had that warm rosiness, that, la- yeah, warm yes. combination. So what I you're will correct. say is this, definitely we'll check in with you at the end of the pod and let you know how this is wearing and what yeah. we think, but this is hands down a in-person purchase buy because A, the frosted Swatch bottle, it which I hate. Put it on the neck. And- you got to pump this with the tester because you could do something cool that is warm and vice versa and it's yeah. not good. You got to match this to yourself in store, but- we're impressed. I love it. And we'll purchase. tell you about the concealer as well at the end too, because that I think is going to be a purchase. I think, so. it, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to see how she's looking because usually by now I'm going to see what my under eyes look like because I'm very judgmental. Totally. Totally. What's up next? So next up, I'm going to go right into this one because this is something else is, that we have on. This is what we set everything with. So this is the new milk makeup. It's the poor eclipse setting powders. So it comes in, it looks, I'm assuming four different shades. So there's, we have translucent, very deep, deep, medium, and light. Awesome. Mama, let's judge this very deep is the question. Yeah. I'll undo the seal. <gasps> very deep. Whoa. Whoa. That is very deep. Which for this, I might insert a photo for you wow. just so you can see. But this is very, very deep. Wow. wow. We have, I mean, even with the milk, uh, the contour stick, that one was so, they're great with shade range. So They really are. Yes. So kudos to them. And that, um, um, the brush that comes with it too. With stunning. The fluffy, like domed brush. I mean, do we need you another don't need, brush? This is nothing. So, unlike the REM Beauty. That is like That's that feels custom. one of a kindy. Custom. This is a fluffy powder brush. Yeah, it's not. It's beautiful, but it's going to be overpressed. Yeah. yeah. So this one is uh, it's weightless. Ta- so I love that they wrote on the box. It says, um, "Oh, pull out. Oh, for info. Look at you knowing things." Okay, so we have you asked and we answered with a weightless talc-free setting powder that works for everyone. Newest member of the Pore Eclipse fam. 
controls shine, blurs pores, and fine lines, and sets makeup up to 16 hours. Uh, so September 2nd, this launches on milkandsephora.com. So by the time this is out, say, it's already it out. out. In stores on the 7th, which on the 7th, House Labs comes out in stores. Ooh. So look out for that concealer too. Yes. Um, but yeah, no talc, no silicone, no flashback, no cakiness, no messy spills, because you can turn the sifter. Yes, yes. Um, and I like that when you go to shake out product in the cap, product actually comes out. I hate when I'm banging and banging and banging. I know, I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't got yeah. it in you? I want to be bang, bang, bang. Into the room. But I was, <laughs> was going to say that. Yes. <laughs> Unlike other purchaser pass, we have it on our face. So yeah. we're going to tell you at the end of this we're how, let you how know. the cookie crumbled. So. I know. Um, <gasps> next up. We my girl, have... my wife. <laughs> so I don't know if we've talked about these before, but. We what? did on the PR unboxing. We did. On the oh, PR unboxing that that's got lost. when it was. Yes, but yes. We, we lost the footage. So these so, yeah. are the new Moira liquid blushes. Love steady liquid blushes. And they come in 12 different shades. Yeah. And they are in a variety of shades. I mean, they yes. really came out the gate swinging, saying, rare beauty. You want shade I range? Know. We're going to do what you did in three years right now. I know. I mean, they really came out the gate swinging. And it these. seems like it's half and half between radiant and matte finish. And the PR unboxing, which was unfortunate that we fell in love with these because they are so highly pigmented. Girl. Matte, beautiful, stunning, absolutely gorgeous. Which, of course, Kevin gravitated right towards this uh, hot, hot pink, pink fuchsia dress. Dream slut blush. Hooker color. <laughs> and uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong. They are all matte. No, so it's half and half. I will. Say, so this one in particular oh, okay. that Kevin's going to show you. This is in the shade so cute. This is like a really bombastic pink. But that one is a radiant finish. And I think <gasps> over. I know you. You don't remember doing this PR vaccine. You get on up to that camera and show those people. It is. Yeah, yeah. He's wow. sliding off his chair. It's I'm the color of the chair. To. I'm about. It's literally it's exactly the color of our podcast chairs. It's literally. Yes. Like Oh my God. It is so, yeah. So that one is a radiant finish. And then there are seven radiance and five mattes. So pigmented, blended like a dream. I mean, these. That is like the blush color of my dream. Yes. And this is Moira. So I guarantee this is under, it's $7 max. Max. So I love that they came out with matte finishes because I love that you include the the ability for people with oily and combination skin to be able to do creams. Yeah. I love it. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of the benefit for that to me is always people with mature skin because it's like mature yes. skin. Creams look so beautiful, but people with mature skin have oily. Skin. Yes. It's so it's, they don't all want, Hollywood flawless filter. They don't yeah. want to look like a disco ball. So with liquids. So I love that you give the option to have that beautiful hydrating cream without it being a radiant finish. Yeah. So I that mean, they is are stunning. Yeah. So if it's not clear, the milk was a purchase. I think those milk are was great. a purchase. Uh, the brush you could pass pass on the brush, um, but the Moira blushes stunning purchase. What's next? Natasha Denona, the, I need a nude palette. So I have mixed feelings. Feeling. I was gonna say so. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. So I remember. I don't think we said this on camera, but you might have said to me off camera that this one that I need a. You were like, oh, that I need a nude. Well, it looked very underwhelming. Do you remember? So. I'm sure y'all remember. Do you remember when we reviewed during the purchase or pass the mini palette? It was like the Natasha Jonah mini star or whatever. Dull, dull, dull brown. Cool brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I am currently looking up the um, shade descriptions of this palette because I think this is the same. <gasps> Don't tell me it's in there. Don't tell me it's in there. Because this to me, this is a neutral, neutral, neutral palette. Like this is a bridal palette. This is for the girl that wants like just neutral tans, golds, champagnes. There is some darker shimmers. If you do want to venture into the smoky eye, the formulas are absolutely beautiful. I mean, again, I'm mad at, you know, I'm mad at Whisper and Travertine. What the hell's that color? Those in between shimmers. Give, give me, me the full foil yes, give finish. Me the full foil finish. The full, the foil, foil finish. finish. So I want to say too that on the Sephora website for the shade descriptions yeah. are not that. So I looked up the mini palette that we reviewed. Mm-hmm. They changed the shade description names. They listen to Beautiful and Bothered. <laughs> yeah. Somebody does. They changed. Sorry, Natasha. It was for your best interest. You they can't changed. Des- you can't describe your own shade as dull. I wanted to go back and like read them for filth, and they literally changed the name of the shade description. That is so funny. So I oh, would, God. I would say, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm really okay. trying to say purchase or pass. Because the other day, I had a comment on this palette. There was a, there was a Beautiful and Bothered uh, 
beautiful and bothered listener and had commented saying, do I need this? You know, you like we had said that for more mature skin, not to use cool tones as much. And I said, it looks like in photos that this has two warm transition shades in the bottom left. Yes. And then the bottom right, I think. Yes. Or somewhere near there. There's, yeah. Oh, up here. Yeah. It looked like there was like some more colors that can add some depth. Yes. Now. They're not as warm as they may look for over... Like, these looked warmer in photos. The shades yeah. Vogue and the shades Wit looked more warm. So I was concerned because they're so yeah. ashy toned. Mesh and I just saw Allie Glines. These are really, really cool. Allie Glines did a video on this palette. And she, of course... She looks, loves cool. but she And she looks stunning when she does it. Yes. I just feel like when I do cool tone shadow... She's it's also just, 25. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Is she really? Oh, yeah, she's young. I'm pretty sure she's got a maybe 26, 27. Oh my God. I know. I, she's so mature for her age. Yeah. That's why, uh, wow. Um, and just stunning and yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And so when I saw this palette and I was like, yeah, like you could do this and just add blush and bronzer in the crease if it gets a little yeah. too cool toned. But I was like, you know, and the more I thought about it and now seeing it in person, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's gorgeous, but it's a little cool tone. It's a little for me. cool tone. There's too many gray colors in there. Yeah. I don't need that. It's too cool, exactly. And especially for mature skin, there's another Natasha Denona palette that's pinkier. You know what I'm talking about. Coming out with this and it's so light and gray. Anybody that's not a fair or light complexion, if you are medium tan, deep, or rich skin tone, this is going to look crazy on you. I agree. Yeah. It, it's not going to look great and it's going to look so gray and just like lackluster. And I think even they, uh, Natasha had a retro palette that was yes. like greens and pinks. And it's like, even that <gasps> not, was like, yeah, the retro was, palette that is real. That is very, because that was almost so, that was almost artsy where it was yeah. very deco sixties, like, uh, Pastel, uh, pastels though. and yes, it, totally. It was just like, who are we making? Like these eyeshadows cannot be, used by all skin tones there it's too you know what i would say is better for mature skin is is the my dream that had a lot more oh, of the, the yeah. pink. you did a video purples. on that i palette. love the my dream i have that yeah the my yeah. dream palette and then as well not the retro glam the retro eyeshadow palette that is the original the, retro the original that retro plums. that is way more plum and pink yeah. those i think are that better. neutral color story but would complement yeah. mature skin and 100%. it's more of a universal thing where it has that beautiful color story rather than this one that i need a nude this is there's a lot of cool tones in here that yeah. i think are going to be a little washed out so agreed i think we're passing i'm gonna pass i think we're passing yeah it's always hard with natasha because we get we get starstruck by the foils oh but then we're like but oh, for 69 dollars, i know it's gotta Mary, be perfect it's gotta be a good palette for 70 bucks like totally. i can't yeah okay but, and then uh last but not least this is exciting you me. are very yes the, i the love Dines this Americks, yeah so, myricks Brand new. So this is by Danessa Myricks Beauty. This is the Groundwork Defining Neutrals. If you're an artist, this is absolutely mind-blowing. This really is such a multi-use palette. You can use this for the face. Uh, you can use this to sculpt, contour, to fill the brows uh, as eyeliner. It is like basically every combination of warm and cool tone colors for an artist. And... I give her a lot of credit because I don't think in a very long time a brand has come out with something that is so geared towards artistry. And you know what I love about this too? You can pop the pans you can out. Pop the pans out. They're magnetic. And they're, they're magnetic not in there, which even says refills. Yes. Oh, so you totally, refills totally. Probably. But yeah. this is so, when I saw this and I saw I that the bigger pans. I would have died when I was doing. Makeup. Oh my gosh, to do like sculpting and everything. I mean, to do brows alone, like I use right now when I do clients, the Anastasia brow palette that yeah. has every single one of them plus the wax. Yeah. This has the bigger pans are like a velvet, like cream to powder. And then the smaller pans are powder. Yes. So then you can kind of sculpt the brows. And if you want to like get more control with the cream and then go over with the powder. Yeah. There are so many good brow colors in here. This to is to give a such little contour. A I genius know. And concept. the packaging I this am just like, is stunning. Oh my God. Heavy. This is beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, just really, she really did it again. I know. If you're an artist, this is stunning. Absolute I purchase. I love this. This is a purchase a thousand times over. And it looks so simple. And it's such a simple concept. But I know. like, she kills it with her formulas. And then the shade ranges, I'm like, okay, everyone else, go to bed. I know. I know. Because. She's taken over. Absolutely so brilliant. So 
purchase. Yes, purchase. Is it time for our REM foundation check-in? Yeah. All right, so Mama's going to grab the mirror. I'm nervous as I'm, like, scratching my face. Okay, so I got to say, I, I feel hot. You know what I mean? Like, from the I'm lights warm. and everything. I will say this. I am... For me, and these are my concerns, I always I always check oiliness, texture, and forehead lines. And I will always say, too, you guys have to understand, I'm somebody, I'm a gremlin six days out of the week. Like, I wear the same shirt, I'm sitting on the couch, I'm editing, I'm doing all the, like, back-of-house things that comes with what, what I do. So when I film, I normally have such, like, a build-up, I haven't taken care of my skin, that, Mama, I am power-washing the texture off, and I didn't with this. This is, like, my, what I feel like is, you know, unmaintained. I just put moisturizer on or whatever. I love the way this is looking on my texture. No pun intended. I love the way. (laughs) I love the way. Yes. And I love the lack of creasing on my forehead. It's really not that bad. Like as much as things settled, I will say I'm like though, really, yeah, I'm surprised. the only thing on my, the oil on my nose, I can tell it's, it's, coming, it's through. coming through and it's starting to just well, reduce the coverage. And you put the milk, the milk setting powder, the pore clips, which yes. is also, that's not doing its job either. Though. I agree. I agree. Yes. So interesting. We'll have to, I mean, give it a second shot too. Yeah. Like we'll have to sit down and really do yeah. our makeup with these things. But, um, I love the concealer. The REM concealer. Okay. This looks absolutely beautiful because I also noticed to Kevin too. I said, I was like, I could tell there's a reflectiveness from it when I was looking in the thing. Yeah. There's this light diffusion yeah. that I really think is beautiful. But um, I it would. It feels very weightless on the skin. I'm curious to see how it's going to look. I'm a little. But for little someone nervous. like me that is oily in the T zone, I will tell you guys, I, and I haven't really talked about it uh, yet, but I have other than my Dior Forever Matte, I have fallen head over heels in love with the Revlon Color Stay full cover. This keeps my oil. I wore this to the Beyonce concert outside, 92 degrees, got home, nothing broke up. I didn't even look like this. Wow. Like I I, I wore this at a Beyonce concert for wow. seven hours, 90 degree heat outside, and it looked better than this foundation looks an hour in. So what my diagnosis is I think this really is better for combination, dead combination. I think if you're, because this is a natural matte finish. If you are, which I kind of, what are you, what are you feeling? I'm, so I feel like my under eyes are creasing a little bit, but I will say I didn't set them. This might be the powder. It, it, it could be a powder situation too. Yeah. So I want to try this again with a different I, powder. Cause I loved the way that concealer went on. I know and I lo- and my foundation looks great. I have my normal, like right around my yeah, nose area. I of- get a little like it, always comes off a little bit in like the crease of my nose, but I have no texture around my nose. I know right that te- it really is making the texture look great. I love the way this Which when it looks. went on, I actually was like, oh, like I thought it enhanced texture, but as it's melt- Dr- as it like settling, sets down, your skin like, looks incredible. I yeah. love it. I'm absolutely obsessed. Which, how would you describe your skin? My skin, so I'm, it's odd because I feel like my nose here gets shiny or like the oils come through here and between my brows and just in the center of my forehead. But then everywhere else I'm like dry up to here and then I'm normal to dry there. Yeah. Where like things typically don't cling well here, which is like at the right below my cheekbone, typically foundation doesn't like stick. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like, and then I'm like, is that an exfoliation issue or whatever? Yeah. But there's just certain like work that I have to put in. So I'm like, then it looks dry there, but otherwise dry to normal and a little oiliness through my T-zone. But because you can tell on my nose this, I'm, I'm no, this is shinier for me. Oh, here, let's do the test. (gasps) Yeah. A little bit. Not bad. Not bad. That I wasn't like that other day. Get, and I that, was playing that, the violin with that, the shut oil. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> that, was the, that was the Urban Decay <laughs> High Germaniac skin tint, which is really- Hyaluronic. Hyaluronic, which is really yeah. better for people with- I love uh, that. Oh, God, it's beautiful, but really better for people with dry skin. But I will say, to be honest with you, I- I'm obsessed. Would absolutely- put something so much more matte like the Revlon or the Dior on my nose and I would do this REM everywhere else yeah. this REM if I'm a little too too oily like I'm 70 I would consider myself 70% oily 30% combo where I feel like you are a true combo person you're yeah. not an oil slick on your nose and this looks absolutely stunning on you I love I'm it. impressed I really I'm am. very impressed I have to give it to her and for $35 I know with the ingredients Shuck. it has, it's better yeah. ingredients. It's not your just you know it's drugstore, not, and it's it's a good price point where it's attainable, but it's also not like 
how slabs where it's forty six dollars, forty nine dollars. Yes. Yes. Like it's a little steep where yeah. you're getting this skincare benefits as well. But the same thing as this one and. I mean, the packaging where House Labs is glass, this is plastic. plastic so you're, yeah. hey, if we're cutting that corner, give me the plastic packaging for I less money. I love that. Purchase or pass on the uh, REM Concealer Foundation. Officially purchase both. And the brush. Yes. Purchase I'm gonna, that brush. Oh, the guys, my number one purchase and is the And the concealer brush, brush, too. Get that brush. Uh, that was a great brush. I think both the of two them bolt brushes, hands down purchase. And that sponge, the new sponge. The new sponge, not and, the little baby nipple sponge. And like I was saying, too, if you go to Ulta now, I would do it uh, the day this comes out. Check the website to see if there's still a gift with purchase mm-hmm. under the thing. They were giving away the sponge with the foundation in the first, I don't know if yeah. it's the first couple of days or while supplies last. So call your local Ulta and see if they still have them as a gift with purchase or if it's still going on at the time. I hope it is. I'm going to say purchase for the concealer. I think the concealer looks great. Yeah. I want to retry because I said the concealer was creasing on me a little bit. I, I honestly think this is the powder and I'm, I'm going to, Pass on the powder. I gotta say, guys, we're passing on the milk eclipse because I have. It's I, disappointing. It's so funny because my concealer isn't creasing for me, but it looks dry, and I know that. Well, that's my the under powder. eyes look textured, and yes. it's creasing a little bit. So it's like I didn't use enough powder, but it's like if I use more of it, my under eyes already look more textured than normal. So I'm not really a fan. So and the, the, I'm yeah, pass did, on the this powder. did nothing for oil control for me on my nose. Anything? Yeah, that's a yeah. big. That's a big selling point too. You're going to claim that it's REM. And it's pass gonna, on milk. Yeah. So I'm curious if REM is ever going to come out with setting powders. I know. I know. Wow. I feel like that's next up for them if they already have concealer foundation. So fingers crossed, it'll probably be great. Alrighty, guys, that is it for another episode of Beautiful and Bothered. This was super fun. Uh, we got the house. We got uh, don't buy counterfeit makeup. Make sure you don't put glue on your lips. Oh, we have a uh, live purchase. Rat or, shit. Rat shit on your... Don't eat rat shit. Rat shit and lead. <laughs> and lead. Yes, the name of my album. Biography. Yeah, rat, rat shit, shit and lead. lead. Um... <laughs> Live purchaser pass of yes. uh, our in studio because, like I said, Johnny is um, strung out in stress. So we're listen. This was, this was it was fun too. It was to fun. See I it like and, doing this approach. It's like Christmas. Feel it. I, I yeah. Like oh this, yeah. Put yeah. It on. To like actually put it on and give our not just a snap judgment of the photo. Totally. Because I if it was we should half start of these, putting on makeup in the beginning and then see almost like mini little PR unboxings yeah. while we do it, but we're trying it out. I like that. All right, guys. So stay tuned next week for a brand new episode. Make sure to subscribe on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It makes the world of difference. And if you're a fan, share this podcast with your friends. Dear God, leave us a five star review yes. if you can. If you want your podcast one day early on Sunday, make sure to subscribe to the official beautiful and bothered youtube channel lastly and most importantly wherever you are you have a youtube YouTube channel (laughs) wherever you are we hope you are happy safe and healthy and remember you are beautiful bye guys do you have a youtube YouTube channel? channel